the nine. And say hello to old, old friends, new friends, ask them how the family is. I like to see a bum puking in the street so I know how good the mayor is. I like to witness the decline and fall of civilization. I like to eat bad calamari and spaghetti at night in an out-of-the-way place that I shouldn't have gone into. I like to do those things, but today is not the kind of day I can even get into a lyrical mood because my head is just locked around what I just discovered. Now, many of you are following this case with very great interest for obvious reasons because there's a lot more at stake than just one egomaniacal talk show host. You understand that. You understand that there's more at stake than Michael Savage. But what you don't understand is I just got information today that I, I was told 10 minutes ago, please, they're begging me, do not disclose what you have in your hand. I was going to do it. I was going to go on the air with the discovery process that finally came out. But for reasons that I can't disclose to you right now, but I will disclose to you within a few days, you're going to understand how big this case really is. It is as big as the Dreyfus affair. I believe that I can say with all honesty that other American talk show hosts are on the ban list, only they don't know it, and they were not named for reasons which I will disclose by next Monday, let's say. And if it turns out that they are on the list, what is that going to say about Limbaugh, Hannity, and the others who would not come to my aid? But let's go back to the U.S. Congress. They came to the aid of Ramos and Campion, who were unfairly accused of this and that, and they put him uh, in jail. I'm not in jail. I'm not on Devil's Island. But I'm in exile. I'm in a sort of limbo. I'm in exile here. They put me in limbo. They put me in exile. They put me in danger. Why is Congress not helping me? Where is the RNC? Where is Mr. Steele? Where is Mr. Rohrbacker? Where are all of these people who want your votes? They're nowhere to be found. Al in Nevada, go ahead, please. Al, why, why is there a Republican Party silent on this issue simple uh you everything you say is perfectly accurate and is right but you can't help them get reelected, so you become irrelevant to them no but the opposite is true uh, 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 you're wrong I, the opposite is true i'm the reason the republican party is unelected i'm the reason that nobody voted i, I took the independence to listen to my show and i said yet no nine Nada to the Republican Party. I said George Bush killed the Republican Party. I ran a drumbeat against the Republican Party for a year, and I took the independence away from them. I could send the independence back to them if they showed a scintilla of conservatism. But you don't represent the independence. You represent conservatives. And everything well, well, hold on. How many, amongst the, the independents, how many are conservative? What percent? Let's assume that 35 to 40 percent of the voters in America are independents, which is the last estimate I saw, about 40 percent. Let's make it even 40 percent. What percent of the independents are conservative? I don't know. I would suspect that it's lar larger than 50 percent of the independents are conservative. They have nowhere to go. The liberals have somewhere to go. They've got the neo-Marxist Obama elected. He is a liberal, so they have somewhere to go. So what do you mean by an independent? An independent is a disenfranchised Republican who saw no conservatism. I'd say it's closer to 80 percent of independents are conservative. The Republicans have nowhere to go but to me. You're wrong. You're 100 percent wrong. It's only by, sh by ignoring my plight that they're digging themselves deeper into the mud. Houston, Texas. Jacob, you're on the Savage Nation. Hey, Michael. Uh, I just think it's disgraceful. Like, these news media people, Bill O'Reilly, Sean Hannity, seem like great people. Why aren't they mentioning you? I mean, it just makes them look like an idiot. It's the biggest story in, in a decade. And nobody has ever mentioned your name. And it just makes me so mad. Well, there's a few reasons. I'm a competitor to them in the same business that they are in. So it would be like Avis not mentioning Hertz or whatever. I understand that from a pure, uh, purely commercial point of view. I totally understand it. Also, I have called them names over the years because they are deserving of being called names. But putting that aside, putting both of those points aside, this is a news story. This is bigger news than having a chef on or a teenager with diabetes on Fox News. This is bigger than having some, some slut from Hollywood walk on Fox News making believe she's telling the news. It's a news story. It's a nation that banned a man in the media. This goes beyond the man. It becomes, why would a nation ban anybody in the American media? Where's the American media? It just makes me sick. No, and yet still nobody mentions it. It 
it's it's just insanity. I mean, well, I mention it, and I, I I'm going to mention it until my name is off the list, and then I'm going to go to the next step. Okay, thank you. It may turn out that they're going to have to mention it very soon for their own self-interest. If it is disclosed that they are also on this list, which I at this time have reason to believe some of them are, I have reason to believe. I didn't say I know for sure. We're going to try to find that out. If it turns out that they, too, are on the list of banned individuals in England, how will that make them look is the question. Don't call me on it. I know what it's going to do. But where is the Republican Party? Are they not our representatives? Do they not represent the American people, or do they represent the Republican Party? I think that's pretty clear, that they represent the Republican Party, not the American people. Just as the Democrat Party represents Democrat interests, not the interests of the American people. Great article, Fiscal Ruin of the Western World, beckons by Ambrose Evans Pritchard. And... What is happening in Ireland, the welfare state, is going to come to America as sure as I'm sitting here. And that is cutting back on welfare, cutting back on public assistance, cutting back on payments to civil servants. Unemployment is going through the roof. They're cutting education by 8%. Rural schools are closing. Teachers, equivalent to a million teachers, are being fired in Ireland. They can't afford them. Is this something that we want to happen? No. We don't want to see the teachers get it. They should be the last to go. It's very simple, ladies and gentlemen. The illegal aliens broke the bank. They're nice people. We admire their family values. We admire their hard work. They destroyed America. The illegal aliens broke the American fiscal system in half. And they did it because the vermin in the Democrat and Republican Party profited by the illegal aliens working for next to nothing. Savage, the Savage Nation. Download the podcast at 910knew.com. Yeah, I'm sure it's an easy thing. What the heck? It's all for rating. He doesn't believe a word he says. He's really a liberal. Sure. It's all an act. Everything's an act. The only people who believe that are people who have no beliefs. They figure the other man has no beliefs and they project their own lack of substance on the next guy. So anyway, here we are. So I was on the air Monday. Today's Wednesday, right? I took off yesterday to talk to lawyers and strategize. After the show, I go to Supercuts to get a haircut. And I'm going to bring it back to politics. Don't worry about it. Supercuts is doing good because who's going to pay $50 for the same haircut you can get for, for, nine, for $20, right? I go in. Aren't they nice people? They don't speak English very well. They're Vietnamese. And I say to her, can you do a Caesar cut? Because I wanted to try the Caesar I said, can you do a Caesar cut? She says, yes, will you, Caesar? I said, no, no. I said, can you do a Caesar cut? Yes, yes, she says, we do Caesar cut. She picks up the scissors. I said, no. Caesar cut, and I try to show with my hands, forward, forward. She says, yes, yes, she gets mad at me. We do Caesar cut. I said, Julius Caesar was a, a Roman emperor, and then I stopped right there. I realized this isn't. Now, this is the problem with immigration in America. They're nice people. But when people are not encouraged to speak the language, you wind up living in, a, in, a, in an insane universe. And it lowers the, the, uh, the IQ of the nation, goes down and down and down. Doesn't mean they're bad people at all. You understand? They're probably nicer people than the average person. They are nice people. We understand. They're nice people. But now we have a meltdown that you could trace right back to President Jimmy Carter. Why do I say that? How did this happen? Fannie and Freddie Mac were created by the government during the Great Depression to make a second market for mortgages in order to create the velocity, in order to increase the liquidity of mortgages. In other words, it allowed banks to lend more by buying mortgages from banks so the banks could then lend money out again. So they created Freddie and Fannie to take away mortgages so the banks could lend more money. But the underwriting guidelines for those mortgages were extremely strict to reduce collapse and to reduce exposure to the U.S. taxpayer. Then, in the 70s, along comes uh, the communist Jimmy Carter, and they wanted more funding for inner-city mortgages. In other words, they wanted unqualified minorities and unqualified minorities to get mortgages for houses they couldn't afford to qualify for and get money for business loans. So what Carter did was they changed the lending ratio. They said you have to lend more to minorities. And if the government 
saw that this ratio of uh, minority lending was not sufficient, the government restricted the loans made in prime mortgages that the government entities would buy. So they punished the banks if they didn't lend money to unqualified minorities. You want me to go on with the naked truth? Next came the Clinton administration. And again, they altered the underwriting rules, again increasing the amount of money going into the inner cities, again making sure more money went into minorities. And let me pause right here. Most of it was not going into the hands of minorities, although it was written by good liberals to make sure that minorities got more money. Many, many rich white people were using minority fronts and women fronts to get this money. You know it and I know it. So the very same people who are uh, on the top to begin with are making more money, hand over fist. Then, so the Clinton administration changes the underwriting rules to increase the ratio even further. What's happened now? What's happened now is that Obama has rewritten the rules again. Because they bring along on the Bush, Barney Frank, 